Hello everybody and welcome back to another houseplant tour. I've only filmed a houseplant tour a couple of months ago but a lot has happened and that's mainly because well it's spring at the moment so plants are thriving, I've done a lot of work in the greenhouse, in the garden as well as indoors so I thought it would be a good idea to give you an updated houseplant tour. And this time around we're starting at the back end of the house and we're moving towards the front. So we're starting with probably the part I'm the happiest with at the moment, which is the greenhouse. Last time you saw the greenhouse, it definitely wasn't as lush. In the meantime, I have put a little bit more effort into setting up the conditions in this greenhouse. So quite obviously, you can see I've now installed a misting system. It's from Sproutwell, um, so same brand as the greenhouse in itself. I've still got my fan running over there. Oop, I'm getting really wet. <laughs> I've got my fan running over here and I've got the solar panels on top. So with those three things, I'm now able to control the conditions in the greenhouse and with more controlled conditions comes more success in growing some of these plants. The misses are gonna go off soon. <laughs> Hang on. So the misters are just on a the timer. They kind of turn on every five minutes for 10 seconds, I think. Um, but then obviously I'll turn the timer off if it's a really cold day and so on. So I haven't fully figured it out. It's still really early days for me in my greenhouse journey, but I can also manually turn on the misting system at any time. So I just got a little humidity reader in there. So if the humidity goes too low or the temperatures goes too high, I can just, uh, put on the misters and that will reduce the humidity, that will reduce the temperature and it will increase the humidity. I have the windows open at the top for the hot air to escape because that is my main issue at the moment. It's getting a little bit hot and I don't have a shade cover yet. That's the only thing that I still need to sort out. Um, but so far, so good. The misting system also kind of helps me with watering everything right so i still go ahead and water everything in there but i don't have to water all too frequently anymore because the misting system keeps everything kind of consistently moist hello baby then the fan is on 24 7 so basically i'm using the same principle as in my ikea cabinet i want to have this on all the time so there's always consistent airflow specifically with the misters there's going to be water on all of these leaves if i don't have airflow fungal issues are inevitable so the fan is on 24 7 and the fan is powered by solar panels that i'm going that i got on top of my roof i've done a specific video just reviewing that sort of setup and actually since I've done the video, um, or in the video it was still earlier in the year and I didn't get as much sunlight in this courtyard and I actually had to manually charge the power bank that kind of powers the fan uh, every couple of days. Actually I haven't had to manually charge it in I think a month now. Um, it gets plenty of sun and pretty much by midday or so the battery is fully charged um, and then it doesn't deplete fully overnight either. So at this stage, really happy with the setup um, but I don't have it all completely automated so I couldn't find something that kind of assesses the humidity and then turns on the mister based on the humidity or based on the temperature turns on the misting system and so on so it's not smart let's say but I have set up manual timers myself um, kind of in line with what I think is the right thing to do anyway Enough talk about the greenhouse in itself. Let's have a look at some of these plants because a few more plants have moved in here. What have we got? So we've got my Vericoisum in here and it's finally given me a new leaf. It has honestly been months. I think it's only grown one leaf since I live in this apartment and it's been eight, eight months. So happy days is give, giving me my first new leaf. Over here I've got a Florida ghost. It gets a lot of light and that's why it's so white. If it gets less light, it will be more green or minty. And eventually they'll obviously fade. Over here I've got a Pothos, I think this, what is it called? Global Green, I think. And there must be a caterpillar on there somewhere because this is a bit too young to fenestrate already. I don't know, so clearly something is liking it. Yeah, let's just call them fenestrations, that's okay. Um, let's have a look at this Splendid over here. This Splendid actually survived winter out here and this was its first leaf during winter and now it's growing another one up here. So it's definitely increasing in leaf size. So the conditions in here must be good. My Paraiso Verde has come back to life. 
giving me a new leaf over here. Finally, um, this is Magic Dragon, a hybrid that Tim from Grow Vertical has made and it's also the first new leaf and it also survived winter out here. Can't really reach that far anymore, but over here I've got a very nice variegated syngonium, loving this spot over here. And right next to that, this one I might actually want to take out to show you. Ooh, sorry, I'm getting really wet. <laughs> this is um, a medium, medium silver. And what happened over winter, it grew a really long runner. Uh, you can see that runner over here, it actually grew all the way up here. So it had its latest leaf here, but the runner actually reached the top of the moss pile. So I'm like, well, it's gonna look a bit empty. So I cut it in between. You can see I made all of these cuts everywhere. You can now see that each little section has a new growth point. And this is the first new leaf that it has grown really, really nice. So significant increase in leaf size. So it must really like these great conditions in here. I mean, it is very, Humid. I'll put a screenshot of that. I can I can download this data over here um, and I'll put a screenshot on it. Obviously right now it's gone down to only 48% humidity, but that's because I've got the big door open. Once I close the door and I put the mister back on, uh, the humidity goes up pretty quickly. All right, what else do I want to point out? I've got a nice variegated um, alocasia over here with a bit of a rescue from Bunnings. So it doesn't have the greatest variegation, but we'll see. My Alocasia Jacqueline is loving it over here and I think it's a stunner. I think it's one of the eye-catching plants in here and it's finally growing its second leaf. It's a really, really slow grower for me, but when it does grow, the leaves are stunning. Kind of had a bit of a theme for Alocasias, uh, I think because I always avoided them growing indoors, but now that I've got a greenhouse, I feel like the greenhouse would be good for them. This one is, oh, gaga, 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 something like gaga. Anyway, what is really interesting about this leaf or this plant is um, when the new leaves first come out, they're fully green and it looks like, oh no, it had no variegation. And then over time, parts of it just fade to this beautiful yellow. I absolutely love this variegation on this plant. And Apparently it can grow really, really large, so <laughs> I'm excited for that. This is an anthurium I grew from seed and it's supposed to have really ribbly edges and nice veining. But what it does when it's exposed to a lot of light, can you see this? It's called flushing variegation. So it kind of, it's very bright in here, isn't it? Can you see this better over here? I think so, yes. So it comes out really red with some green variegation almost, but it just fades but it looks really funky when they first come out. So the anthuriums are actually really, really happy here. I didn't expect them to be that happy. So I'm really glad that they are. So I started moving a few more out. All right, this one is a Magnificum and Forgetty Eye hybrid. And look at how beautiful this new leaf is and this sheen and, oh, I love this. And there's another pup coming over here and everything is throwing out inflows at the moment as well. I might not point out every single plant, otherwise we'll still be here tomorrow, but new leaves everywhere, right? So there's new leaves here, new leaves at the top over here with the dubia giving me nice fenestrations. These hanging plants are loving it and they've grown really nice and lush. And my carnivorous plant over here grew a lot of leaves when I had it in my bedroom, but it didn't grow any pitches. And I mean, that's what you grow them for. And since I put it in here and it's in a really high humidity environment, it gets uh, watered by the misters and so on, you can slowly start seeing these pitches actually shaping up. Whereas before, let me show you this one, they all just dried up, like just nothing happened while I was growing them in a lower humidity environment. So finally, it's thriving. Which is great. Um, I don't know if there's anything else to highlight. Or oh, maybe I want to talk about these ones over here. These are alocasias I have grown from just seed. Um, so I might give them another couple of weeks and then I think I'll start putting them in the ground. 
I'll just do a quick pan through the greenhouse so you can see everything a little bit. But yeah, I don't think I need to point out every single plant. I think it's more about what it looks like as a collective. Also, it's quite sunny, so it might be hard to see everything. Alrighty, so I told you the misting system in itself was from Sproutwell, but I connected it to a Holman like smart um, tab, so I can control the tab, basically this thing at the back over there. So I can now do two minutes of manual misting, for example, or over here I've got my schedule set up. Oh no, I turned it off. There you go, okay. So I can do manual misting, let's have a look. So it's 32 degrees and 46% humidity. Let's do two minutes of misting. And I'll close the door. All right, over here in the corner, I still got my Aeroid Mix bar. So I love having everything handy. So it's really convenient if you ever need to repot anything. And then here, I just pre-made a few moss poles. So whenever I need to extend something or put something on a moss pole in the first place, I always have everything handy. No reason to procrastinate. To my right over here, I've got my variegated Epipremnum panatum, and it's also been out here during winter um, and survived. Huh? It definitely gets beaten up by the wind a little bit. It has long petioles and long leaves. Like sometimes I just sit in there and I just see the leaves swaying across the window. I'm like, oh my God, the poor thing. So what I've done, the new growth that grew during winter wasn't really nice. So I cut the new growth. And if we're having a closer look now, you can see that the top four nodes are growing a new shoot. So there's one shoot here, one shoot here is kind of unfortunately going inside the pole, but so be it. One shoot here and another shoot here. Also kind of going inside of the pole. Come on, get out. It's fine. So after one cut, four new growth points. So it's looking a little sad right now maybe, but it's gonna look really, really nice really soon. All right, quick update just after the two minutes of misting, the humidity is now at 63% and the temperature is down to 31. So it's still quite hot and not as humid as I would like it to be, but I have a schedule set up. So from one o'clock every five minutes, it's gonna mist a little bit again. So it's just more about having it uh, be continuous. But we're going into the hottest part of the year. We're going into the part of the year that has the most sunlight. I haven't lived here during that part of the year uh, before. So this is all news to me about the amount of sunlight hours I get and the sunlight exposure I get in different parts of my apartment. So I'm still learning. Right? Um, it takes a little while to really understand your environment and obviously growing in greenhouses is completely new to me. Next to the greenhouse, I'm doing something else that's a bit new to me, which is growing some veggies. And these these cucumbers looked a little bit better before, but they were kind of growing wild. I moved them over um, for a reason. Anyway, so these are my sprout pots over here and I'm filming a separate video for that as well. So I don't want to take everything away just yet. But basically I've got two types of cucumbers growing over here. They're having lots and lots of flowers. It's thriving for sure. And they're basically in these self-watering uh, self-watering auto top-up pots. So I do zero for them. They're connected to the hose and they top themselves up and then there's like self-watering wicks that wick up all of the moisture. So they water themselves. Same as the pet grass over here. Come on, bread. The cat grass and catnip over here for bread is also thriving. And I mean, look at the mint. I have a whole field of mint growing over here, so mojito season is coming, I think. So this is kind of like the basin that has the water in it, and then as the water level drops, this will drop, causing it to refill. Down in the pot, there's these two wicks that kind of wick up the water from the basin into the actual pot. Bradley, do you want your grass? 
So it's a really convenient setup. I absolutely have to do nothing for it and everything is thriving. This is getting a lot of sun these days. So it's looking a little bit sad right now because it's just been blasted by sun. But as the sun moves and it's starting to drink up again, uh, it will look really, really fresh. Like you can see, it just looks a little dehydrated right now. It's going to recover uh, in the afternoon when the sun goes down. And my baby now always has fresh grass to munch on, huh? Alrighty, while well, Brett is munching away on this, the cucumbers had powdery, powdery mildew, which I think happens if they're growing in really humid environments. Now, people said to spray milk. I don't use milk, so I never have milk at home, so I didn't spray milk. But I saw somebody say, put baking soda in water and spray it out, which I did. Well, it got rid of the mildew, but it also kind of burned all of the leaves. <laughs> but the new growth seems to be happy. But that's why you saw a little bit uh, like a, some shabby leaves at the bottom of the pot. That was kind of the baking soda treatment that I gave it. Anyway, it's flowering, it's thriving. Now I just need cucumbers. All right, enough grass for today. All righty, quick update. The greenhouse is now on 29 degrees and 64% humidity. So we're going in the right direction. All righty, the outdoors is definitely what I have focused on the most over the last couple of weeks or months because, well, it is spring and it's new. It's something exciting for me to learn about, something I haven't really done before. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really, I, I love learning about new things. I really love setting myself challenges and so on. So this whole trying to figure out the greenhouse thing uh, was a lot of fun to me. But of course, my heart is with the indoor plants, specifically with the velvet philodendron. So I think it's time to move inside and show you some of my plants inside. And I've done a big day of plant care, plant cleaning and so on uh, just two weeks ago. I think you would have seen the video by now. So most of my plants in here are also thriving. So let's start off with the plants that are thriving. This one is my Milano. Newest leaf over here, still got some unfurling to do or like some inflating to do, but I absolutely love this plant and I love that it's finally giving me those large elongated dark leaves. Really, really sexy. Second shoot down here, also very elongated, uh, but not quite as large just yet. I'm just a bit pissed off that one of them has already reached the top of the pole you can see the top node is no longer attached to the pole. So all of these aerial roots, what a waste. I want these aerial roots to go attached to a moss pole, but there is no more moss pole. So it's due for a chop and extend, but if I chop and extend it now, this plant will hardly make it to the extension. So first of all, that means that it's gonna lose a lot of progress because it only has two or three nodes. And secondly, it would just be way too far down. I'll just aggravate the issue. It will grow even slower than the top and so on. I want them to grow in the same speed. So I'm not too sure what to do with it just yet, but not fully happy. All right, next to it, we've got my Sodiroy. I think this was the latest Sodiroy leaf. It's definitely losing its silver as it matures a little more. Not necessarily to my liking, but I think it just has one of the most stunning leaf shapes, like just the perfect heart. Right, next to it, the big monster, the Glorious. I gave it a, um, like a good spray the other day and the water left some marks, so I kind of need to ideally wipe it again, but it's too big of a plant to maneuver around all too frequently, so I'm trying to not touch it. Righty, down here we've got a few nice ones. These are small enough for me to move them out. This is my pride and joy at the moment, my Philodendron rubrijuvenal. Rub I think that's the official name these days. We all know it as El Choco Red. And without a fail, every time I post about this plant, somebody asks me, but I thought it was a crawler. I think it is displaying perfect signs of climbing. So I think this is really the stereotypical climber. And you can see how it's growing all of these roots into the moss pole. And look at these stunning backsides. That is super nice. So I moved this out of the IKEA cabinet maybe a month ago or so, but it really didn't mind the transition. Now that my big varicosum is recovering in the greenhouse, I did have to replace it with a small varicosum. Can't have a wall of velvet philodendron without a varicosum. So I've got this little varicosum that I rescued and I've got a full video 
on this particular plant as well. Righty, and down here I don't want to move it because it has really long petioles in all directions. This one is Philodendron Esmeraldense. Love, love, love this leaf. So, just so beautiful, just nice structure. I know, I really, really like this, but it's a really slow grower, but when it grows, it's beautiful. While we're here, let's talk about the light situation. We, I've got two big mother grow lights, the PS32. Yeah, PS32, Plant Spectrum 32, and I just mounted them on top of each other. I've got these little discs that they're supposed to stand on and you screw them in. Well, I just used a screw that comes with the disc to screw the two on top of each other. If that made sense? I don't know. I figured it out all by myself. I'm sure you can too. All right, last one on this wall is my big Philodendron Splendid, and that just had its chop and extend maybe three weeks ago. Um, so I really love that when you do the chop and extend, it just comes down a little bit, right? Before it had all of these big leaves up there and I couldn't really see them. Now they're on eye height. I can properly appreciate these leaves. And there's a new big leaf coming over here already. So happy days. Moving over to the other side of the room. It's hard to show you because I would love for you to be inside and we look out but it's just too backlit for you to really see these plants properly. So first up, we have my beautiful big um, Alocasia cupria. Absolutely love this monster, but it is just throwing out so many inflows, I think for every leaf that I get. And I actually finally have a new leaf here. Whee, where is it? Here. Finally have a new leaf right here. For every new leaf that it grows, it probably grows about six flowers. So I usually just cut off the flowers. I have no desire to do anything with them, but obviously the plant still spends energy on producing flowers. I much rather have it grow leaves. And this is my, I, let's call it Calithria mosaica. I'm pretty sure it's changed its name, but it had a repot and since then it's given me all of these bigger leaves. So happy days. And next to that, I've got a nice pole of philodendron Majestic. Love the Majestic. I think it has a really nice sheen. I used to have a really big mature, mature Majestic, but I really hated the mature form. So I cut it right back um, to start off with smaller cuttings again. It has nice backside. So Majestic is a hybrid of Varicosum, very clearly visible with the red backs, as well as the rough petioles and Sodiroy, which shows in some silver splatches. I think you can see them in the juvenile leaves over here a little bit better. And it comes with the little sheen that the Sodiroy has as well. Not as velvety as a varicosum would be. So kind of a mix of those two. All right, let's focus on this one. Over here, we've got my big banana, Musa Acuminata Sabrina. Blood banana. In my opinion, it doesn't like direct sun. If I give it direct sun, it will not show the nice red pattern. So that red really seems to come out if you give it some darker conditions. Obviously not darkness. There is no plant that appreciates darkness. Just some appreciate lower light more than others. I've got a super cute orchid over here. I do not remember the name and I didn't buy it. It was a birthday present but I really like it um, I have no idea how to care for it though so I'm just hoping that it's not gonna die but so far so good it survived a month and a half so clearly doing something right all right what else do I have to have my tenue has given me its largest leaf ever but it also has had some spider mites dry I think this one needs the water this one is my Jose Bueno it had thrips and it fell, so it's gone through a lot, but it's still growing. Not to its full potential. I reckon this would actually really like it in the greenhouse as well. So I might just consider putting it in the greenhouse instead. It's pretty full in there already. <laughs> and next to that, we've got the Sharonii Shazza. You can also see it had spider mite damage. So if you come a bit closer, you can see all of these little dots. Those were spider mites, those little buggers. And I know you're gonna ask me how I treat spider mites. I still use Vitality Plus. I have half a bottle left, but it has been discontinued. So 
Unfortunately, that's nothing you can actually purchase at the moment. But if you have a magic solution to spider mites, please let everybody know in the comments. In my opinion, it's probably impossible to find a magic solution for spider mites. I think they will eventually just come. I just deal with them then and there. And majority of the time, I actually do pest prevention instead of pest treatment. So I just take my plants and I just clean them, spray them with water, spray off any dust or any pests that might be on there. And just keeping them clean and healthy is preventing a lot of pests from really settling in in the first place. If you wait until the pests are having a field day, it's gonna be really, really hard to get rid of them. All right, I think we covered this entire room. Oh, actually one left, sorry, one more. This is my Aglaonema Pictum Tricolor. Don't have too much to say about it. Let's move through into the second room, which is the bedroom. First things first, let's have a look at this. So one of my friends from uni, I'll link her Instagram down below, has made this rug for me. So it's, my, it's like a rug, it's made from fabric. And I just thought it makes a really nice like throw on my bed, I don't know. All right, um, let's start off with this corner maybe. This is kind of my anthurium room, minus the ones that I moved into the greenhouse over the last couple of weeks or months. And the anthuriums were really the plants that didn't like the move uh, at all. They suffered the most. Uh, and at some stage I almost had like just stumps left, but they are recovering. So let's have a look at some. A lot of these are actually the exact same. Let's start off with the mother plant, actually. So then it will all make sense. Whoop, this is Anthurium crystallinum. Uh, it's a hybrid called wild crystallinum. I'm not too sure what it's hybridized with. So look at this new leaf. It's gonna be nice. All right, so the reason I'm showing you this one first is because I actually used this one and pollinated it with itself to make some babies um, and I call them Anthurium crazy rubbish. That's the little hybrid that I made, really unique. <laughs> so this is one of the little cr uh, crazy rubbish. So it's, it's basically the same plant. It should technically have the exact same DNA, but of course with Anthuriums, especially if they're hybrids and this, the mother plant was a hybrid to start off with, um, you can get a lot of variation in, in leaves, but these all look fairly similar because I crossed it with itself, I suppose. So this one, and all I've done with these is I, I grew them in one big pot and you'll see the big pot later. And I just at different times isolated different plants. Obviously the earlier I isolated the plant from the big pot, the earlier it started to thrive because it got a bigger pot by itself and so on. So the one that I separated from the rest of the bunch first already looks as big as this. So this was the last leaf and now this new leaf is going to be much bigger. And you can already see it's starting to have this sort of closed sinus or similar to the actual mother plant that has that as well. So this one by now is already in a 20 centimeter pot because I separated that out at the very beginning. Now maybe two months ago, I separated out more, like this one, for example. So it, hadn't, it hasn't had its own pot for all too long, so it's still small, but look at the healthy, healthy roots that it has grown. I started using more tree fern fiber in my mix for anthuriums, and they love it. I have a Vichii over here, finally growing. I've grown, grown this one from seed, and I think I got the seeds be three years ago now. Holy moly. I think three years ago I got these seeds. Um, so yeah, clearly it's not super happy with me, but that's okay. This is another crystallinum hybrid that I bought and this is its newest leaf. And I only repotted this a couple of weeks ago, but you can definitely see how there's roots growing into the moss, and then from the moss, they'll eventually expand in the aeroid mix, right? So the moss is really encouraging new root growth, and then they'll eventually reach the mix, and then go crazy. 
Lots of flowers at the moment as well. Sometimes I just go around, cut them all off. Sometimes I just keep them on there, but I'm not really, I really have the desire to make more hybrids. I just run out of space. This one, I don't wanna, should I pick it up? I'll pick it up. Really, really love this one at the moment. I just know that it's a puppy hybrid. I don't remember exactly what it was hybridized with, but I'll find out and put it on screen. Look how dark these new leaves are. And they stay really dark, even when they're fully in flight. So this was the lightest leaf. Really, 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 really happy with this. What else do I have? This one is a little hybrid. Um, was a Magnificum with, uh, with a queen that I might, but I have a larger one of these hybrids in the IKEA cabinet. I think last one. AJ gave me this one for Christmas last year. It's a Clionervium hybrid with a really wide sinus, so quite interesting. So Anthuriums are thriving again inside the greenhouse as well as outside of the greenhouse. So maybe it has absolutely nothing to do with the greenhouse in the first place. Let's have a quick look at the other side of the room. This is where I've got my forest and I don't want to take all of these down now, but basically I, they all grew a lot and they started growing all of these runners and leaves down here. I don't really like trailing plants that much. If they're trailing, they need to be really lush. So what I usually do is I take these and I kind of twist them around the top of the pot so that more nodes make contact with the substrate in an attempt to hopefully grow a larger root system. But that way I kind of keep it really nice and neat. I don't want it to look super overgrown. Um, but yeah, and the ones that have kind of outgrown it, like my carnivorous plant, for example, they just need to move on. So it's very much for smaller plants, but it takes up a really small spot uh, only. So I like it, gives the room a little bit of height. Um, otherwise, everything is down here, elevates it quite nicely. But, oh, oh my God, forgot about this one, huh? Sorry, it's too obvious, forgot about the obvious one. This is my Anthurium vitarifolium. That's all I've got to say. <laughs> it just lives up here and it's happy. All right, now that's it for this room. Let's move through to the living area. All righty, and here we are in the living room. Over here, I've got my big variegated Monstera and it's supported by a Soltec light bulb over here. It's the Vita, Vita light bulb and it's just in an Ikea lamp. And I've got a discount code for the Soltec lights and the mother lights, um, all in the description, uh, by the way. So this is quite big. It is uh, thriving. Had this is, it was its newest leaf. I'm very happy with that. And now it's pushing out a new one over here but it doesn't look super variegated, which is a little disappointing. But what is crazy about this plant is the root system. And you guys see how crazy the roots are going into the pole. And then obviously some of them find their way out of the pole again. And then sometimes I take them and kind of maneuver them back into the pole. But if I squeeze some of this pole, it's so tough, so hard, I can just feel like compared to the top where it's very squeezable, you can see the little bounce. Down here, there is hardly any bounce to it. It's because it would just be full and full and full of roots. Good problem to have. But yes, with the next chop and extend, I'll probably work on converting her to a large grow vertical pole. So the one with the plastic backing that will just give it more room for roots within the pole. I think this existing pole is a little too skinny for it. I'm currently also working on a separate video for the IKEA cabinet because I'm trialing out new lights. These are again, new Soltec lights. And that's because the previous light that I had was actually so strong, it was kind of blinding. Like it didn't make a nice atmosphere within the living area. It was just way too bright and the plants at the top were burning. So I had to build like a little shade cover. I now switched to Soltec lights. It's the new Groove Soltec light that they've got. And they, I can just remove them. They just look like this, nice and small. And I, they just have these little brackets that they slide into. 
and you can also then twist them around, you know what I mean? So I can make them point forward or in this instance, I have it point backwards a little bit. So if I'm sitting on the couch over here, I'm not being blinded. They're also touch operated. I think I can dim them by touching them like this. Nah, hang on. Ah, this way, I think. Yeah, so I can dim them. You can see it's slowly getting darker, but they're only 10 watts in the first place. So I actually want to have them on the brightest setting. So let's do that. But you can also turn them on and off via just tapping. So they are perfect for like under shelf lighting or something like that. Uh, but I thought I want to give them a go in my IKEA cabinet. So I've got some small plants over here. I kind of, I'm planning on a lot of, I'm, I'm currently filming a lot of videos for most of these plants. So I'm not going to point all of them out. But I wanted to show this cute little one. It's a variegated Milano. Look at this little bit of variegation there. Could be cute. We'll find out. We've got a little fry deck over here. It was honestly the tiniest baby when I got it. Really loving this. Another variegated alocasia over here. Told you I've got something about alocasias at the moment. I don't know what it is. I've got a little, uh, is it serpents? Or scrummy coli? Something like that. I don't remember which one, but I love the fuzzy petioles. I got this one from Grow Vertical Team. Got a Patriciae, Patriciae over here. And some cute luxuriance, huh? I love the luxuriance over here. This is the Queen Magnificum Hybrid. So another one of those ones that I showed you earlier. I think this one is more stunning and I reckon it's just because it's growing in better conditions. But look at the nice sheen. Closed sinus, so there is definitely some forgetty eye in that Magnificum in the first place. And nice and elongated, almost like the Queen, which we've got down here. So she has grown. Can I take her out? think so. So this is the queen um, and I just need to hold her down here so she's in the light but this is the new leaf that she has grown. Really really beautiful. So she definitely has recovered from the big chop. In case you haven't seen that video I chopped her into three, four, I think five bits. There's some propagation still here uh, but the big mother cutting really only had two leaves left by the time I was done with her. So pretty happy that it recovered so quickly and went back to growing really nice large leaves. Leaves me with a new problem. It's definitely outgrown this cabinet. So maybe it's time to move into the greenhouse. Next to that, I've got my third attempt of growing a variegated Adansonii. And so far, it is the best attempt. You can see sometimes it goes very close to being almost fully white. But yeah, I think this next one is going to be really white again. And then the next one is probably going to be half, half again. You can see based on the stem, that anything on the right hand side is more white, anything on the left hand side should end up being a little more green. Yeah, fingers crossed that it's not gonna go all white again. And, and last one that I might wanna show you down here is this Rugosum. It's also on a moss pole, growing a new leaf now. I think it just has beautiful texture. I am trialing out more substrates in the poles, not just moss. But straight away, you can just see, I just picked that up. I didn't do anything with it. And there's tree fern fiber everywhere. So I find that moss is actually the cleanest option. It is the option that maintains moisture the longest as well. I know people are often complaining about moss drying out so quickly. Well, if you use bark or cocoa chips instead, that dries out much quicker even. I've got a second one of these grow lights on the door over here, right? So obviously it works best when it's closed. Ideally, actually, the cabinet would be a bit deeper. It's a bit too shallow. Um, most of the light is really taken up by that bloody queen, huh? But the idea behind having one of the lights on the door was that, well, before the light was coming from the top, so all of the leaves faced to the top, right? So when I look at the cabinet, cabinet face on, I couldn't really see any of the leaves. I just you know, I had to look at it from up here to really see how beautiful these leaves are. That's what I love about the mother grow lights that I've got in both of uh, my bedroom and the office. Because they're vertical and they're coming from the front, all of the leaves start facing forward. So giving me this nice display side, giving me this like wall of philodendron vibes, right? So 
That's why I put one on the door, so there's light coming from the front in an attempt to make all of these plants kind of face forward a little bit more rather than just upwards. See how we go. On this side, we've got a Mykins. Yep, that's all I have to say about it. And on this side, we've got my big El Salvador. Now, in it's a beautiful plant and it's been one of the first plants I've had. But in uh, one of the recent videos, I showed you how I train a plant down the moss pole. So, so this shoot over here reached the top of the pole and I then trained it down the moss pole, just securing it with twine. And then here again, and then there's another piece of twine here. It hasn't really fully attached yet. But what I wanted to show you is at the top of the moss pole, it had these sort of leaves, right? As it was climbing. Now that I train it down, the leaves are this size. And I mean, this one still has some fenestrations, but definitely significantly smaller. And the next one, look at that. Look how, even just look how skinny, look at the leaf. It's only this big now. And look how skinny the petiole has been getting. So I don't train my plants down the moss pole often. It's really just if I'm way too lazy to do a chop and extend. Um, but my preference, specifically if I'm trying to get my plant to mature and grow large leaves, my preference is to continuously grow it up and then do chop and extends, not let it trail down. I only let it trail down if I'm not really interested in the plant maturing any further. Like my micans, for example, that went up and down heaps of times, right? And I don't care if the leaves are getting smaller. I just want it to be a lush, compact pole. This one, I would actually like to see, see it mature a little further, but on the flip side, getting it back to juvenile keeps the silver a little bit better. So I see beauty in both, so I'm kind of doing a bit of both with this one. Let's move into the kitchen maybe. Not all too much over here. These are my alocasias, they suffered a little bit. Uh, two of them are actually just propagating in water, so it's no longer as lush of a display as it used to be. Over here, I've got some cute cuttings. These are just leaves I had to cut off as part of a chop and extend. I'll show you in a sec. But these are some nice mojito cuttings. And this is the mother plant, let's say. So with this one, I don't really like syngoniums when they mature. I kind of love this beautiful arrow shape leaf. Uh, and I want it to be really lush. So. I'll propagate these and then I'll pop them back into the pot and I've done this before. So this was the original plant and then this was the last bunch of cuttings that I planted in here. Now once these are rooted, I'll pop them in here as well, right? So that way I can just have a really, really lush pot with, I don't know, but then it will probably be like 10, 12 cuttings in here, which means that, well, if all of them grow just one leaf, that's 12 leaves. I think that is so much smarter than having one long vine that ends up somewhere in the bathroom. Talking about the bathroom, we didn't see the bathroom today, but honestly, there's nothing in the bathroom at the moment. It's just not really the night, like, I mean, no plants worth showing. A little variegated Monstera propagation. If you come a bit closer, you can see that I cut between the stems uh, or between the nodes. So there's basically one, two, three, four, five, five plants growing on this pole at the moment, but that's only been a couple of weeks. So there's some new growth points coming out over here, but no new leaves yet. But you guessed it, I'm filming a full video on this one too. So stay tuned for that. But I just wanted to show you that you can propagate the plant and make it into five pieces without actually changing the setup at all, right? So really convenient way. All right. Last one in the kitchen is my Syngonium Steiermarkia, Markia, Marki? One of my favorites at the moment. I love the leaf shape, I love the leaf texture, I love the leaf color, and I love the display. So there's three plants on this pole and I think it just makes this really nice display. Doesn't it just look like fluffy? I don't know. I don't know if the light is good, but it looks amazing in real life. Alrighty, and then on this side is my big west facing window with my big poles. We're better off looking them from the outside, but I wanted to point out these few plants over here. So first things first, 
I've got my Mangela Pothos over here. She just had a chop and extend yesterday. What I've done with her is I potted up the bottom pole and the top pole together and then just extended the top. That's exactly what I've done with my El Salvador, with my Gigas. That makes, that reminds me we forgot the Gigas in the bedroom. Anyway, we'll survive. Uh, great way to make a lush up hole without having to go through any further propagation. I'm doing the chop and extend already anyway. Now in this corner over here, and I'll just bring them out so they're easier to see for you guys. This is the lush pot of Anthurium crazy rubbish, right? So remember when I said I made these berries and I had hundreds of them, I just popped them all into one big pot. And you can see these are significantly smaller than the ones that are separated from this big pot. Because, well, these ones have to compete for light, water, space, nutrients, and so on. So they're just stunted in growth a little bit, whereas the other ones, they got their own little pot, they can thrive. But I really like this lush display. It's not always just about size. Exact same over here. This is just a pot of Magnificum uh, hybrids that are also just planted all in one pot. And so be it. They're a little bit larger because they're, I think, half a year older than the other ones. And I think they're getting a little bit more light. Talking about light, this little island of plants isn't getting any natural light from the west facing window because the poles behind me just absorb it all. So I've got a Soltec light over here again. This one is the Aspect 40 watts. And then down here, last plant. Oh, it's heavy. Yeah, I just watered it thoroughly yesterday. It's my ring of fire. Absolutely love this plant. Probably hard to see with all of the light sources coming from everywhere, but it is literally on Fire. Look how nice it looks. And it's dripping down my hand. So let's wrap this up. Alrighty, now the big west facing window. First things first, we've got my Discoria Discolor. And three weeks ago, this plant had zero leaves. Again, I'm working on a separate video for this one. It is a super fast grower and it just has the most amazing foliage and really, really nice, colorful backsides as well. If you come a little bit closer, you can even see that they have a little bit of sheen to it and they're very, very thin, very see-through. You can see this cute little pink veining. And as they get a bit older, so where we further down, they also start having almost like a camouflage look to them. So I really love them. It goes dormant during winter and then when it's spring, it just escalates like crazy. I mean, look at the mess over here with all of the leaves. Look at all of these new leaves. They're all in flight and become huge. And these vines trying to hold on to everything and anything. So I kind of try and twist, twist it around itself a little bit to make it lusher. But if I don't manage this, it, it would literally attach to my Adansonii, everything, everything. So be careful. <laughs> right, down here, talking about colorful plants, we've got my Oxalis triangularis, and I think this is the luscious, it, luscious it's been since the move. So definitely suffered a little bit after the move. It was used to more light, but now with the sunlight hours increasing over here, um, going into summer, it seems to be much happier again. And my plants are happy, I'm happy. Next to that, I've got a, another variegated Adansonii, but this one is called Indonesian Marble. Has more of a marbled variegation look. Can sometimes end up looking a little bit sick. But I hope as it matures, it will just grow out of this weird shape. So we'll see. All right, the other plants are a bit too big, so I can't move them out, so I'll move you in. So on the far left, I've got my Monstera Dubia. Not much more to say. And over here, I've got my Monstera adansonii. It is now currently growing in fluorescence number eight over there, but I just cut them off because I wanted to grow leaves instead. If we're also having a look at the back, these are these plastic backed grow vertical poles and we're filming against the light, but you should be able to see a huge root system pushing towards the back of these poles. No, you can't really, it's too dark. Sorry for that. 
Alrighty, we're moving out into the second courtyard and this is the nicer courtyard, but it doesn't have a greenhouse. Okay, the first thing you see is my current obsession, which are proteaceous plants. So proteaceous plants, and whenever I refer to them, I actually do it wrong. I just keep calling them natives. Not all proteaceous plants are native to Australia. A lot of them are native to South Africa. But we know Australia and South Africa have very similar flora in the first place. So these ones are Leucospermum. So this one is Leucospermum totem ex formosum. Uh, also just referred to as carnival peach and leucospermums are native to South, uh, South Africa. They are my favorite though. I've got another one over here which is a little more on the red side whereas this one is kind of more red and pink, uh, red and like peachy and then I've got another one over here that's a little bit more orange. So they come in like all sorts of colors these days and they are honestly super readily available over here at Bunnings or Flower Power and so on. So I've been obsessed with them and I've been buying a lot of them. <laughs> but I think they look so nice. I think people, you see them often in like bouquets of flowers because they look like fireworks or something like that. I'll insert a few photos from the Blue Mountains Botanic Garden. I went there last week. Their Leucospermum's collection or like display out of this world. Like I was the happiest, the happiest person ever, I think, when I was there. Anyway. What else do I have? I have a Vorata over here, but she is, the flower is kind of dead. So this was the Vorata flower, but it has now grown two new shoots. They do like to flower in cooler climates, I think. So I don't think they necessarily appreciate the approaching summer. And we had a really hot spring as well. Over here, we've got a Protea. Protea is also native to South Australia. Uh, South Africa. This one is a uh, little prince, but it hasn't bloomed at all for me So I don't think it will happen this season to be honest and on here. We've got another protea. I don't remember this protea I don't remember what it looked like. Maybe this was strawberry ice I think this is strawberry ice and then this one is also another protea, but also no flowers yet, but maybe next year so protea and leucospermum native to South Africa Banksias and Voritas native to Australia. But they're all part of Proteaceae. <sighs> Plant names are hard. So they're in the same family, but they're not all the same genus. But when I usually refer to them, I just call them natives because it's easy to say. And that's where Bunning sells them in the bloody native section, okay? So give me a break. <laughs> all right, then right opposite of that little deck or poor excuse of a deck, is my are my poles right and these poles have also survived winter out here so when i first moved in i moved in in march so that was obviously leading into like march was still really nice and hot so it was april but then may was i think one of the coolest mays we've ever had um, so it kind of went into winter pretty quickly so a lot of these plants kind of just deteriorated for the last six months but now they're coming back to life i mean you can see this growth over here for example on my normal silta picana it's not beautiful don't get me wrong but i don't have room for it inside so it just needs to stay out here got another big and through um adansonii over here um, this one is Pinati Patita, but yeah, because they're outside, they're obviously exposed to the conditions. They're, they're you know, I don't know, possums can climb on them, uh, the wind just bashes them, the sun hits them way too hard and so on. So they don't look perfect, they don't look, look manicured, right? They're not like the plants in my, in my office where the worst thing that can happen to them is like me walking past a little too fast, right? Um, these are plants like they're in real nature if you go out into the bush like you don't see just perfect leaves so i don't mind it at all but i think as a collective it still looks really nice and lush uh, but just don't focus too much on each individual leaf okay? um, this is the big El um, my big cebu blue not so blue anymore it loses the blue as it matures but it's also now reshooting uh, after I cut the top growth. The top growth was just way too damaged uh, based on uh, by wind. All right, what else can I point out? Not all of them are really wor talk worthy, but I want to talk about this one. It's another little project I've got going on. And of course, I'm going to do a designated video for this one. 
Uh, this is like a little trunk of tree fern fiber that I just found on the street and I mounted some bromeliads on it. Because why not? This year it's all about trying new things, getting out of your comfort zone, doing things that you might not normally do. And as a result of that, you usually learn a lot. Let's have a look at this one. This one is Bosworth Beauty. It comes out with these really nice purple leaves. It's definitely a bit damaged by the wind, but I just wanted to show you how beautiful these inflows are. It has the most purple inflow, but I've never actually attempted to do anything with that inflow. Maybe I should. Let's see. And over here, we've got a fat boy philodendron. Philodendron Carcinianum, is it no? Martianum, Philodendron Martianum, um, aka Fat Boy. I really love this one. It's been actually one of my first plants as well. I've had this for a long time. It's not impressive or anything like that. It's just, does its thing, why not? Alrighty, let's talk about the obvious. There used to be a tree here, which has been removed. If you follow my channel, you might've seen the full video, but yes, it had to be removed. It was a council decision, so instead, I now have this nice cantia palm over here and I've done a video on that as well where I just potted this up. You might remember that I put in these lotus vines over here. They're flowering again and they have expanded so much since I first bought it. It would have only been up to here I think when I first bought it. So has this one and this one. So they've all been growing really, really nicely. So really happy with that. Now, because the tree used to be here, um, they ripped out a lot of the plants when they removed it. Um, and it was as a result of that, I feel like I had this really big empty gap over here. So I wanted to get some tall plants that can fill that gap and hopefully give me a little bit more privacy. So I rescued this huge bird of paradise. It is Looking a bit sad, but that's because it was in the rescue section of a nursery. So I need to nurse it back to health, but it has great potential. And over here, I've got a Heliconia, uh, Heliconia Hot Rio Nights. Really excited for that one. See how we go. I still have that Heliconia that I planted in the ground a couple of months ago, and it's also still alive. So happy days. And Brad, you are sitting on the Marantas. Bradley, please. Okay. <laughs> and where Brad was sitting, there's actually a few Marantas that are planted that have finally started recovering, but not if he keeps sitting on them. The trio star is in flower. And there are some other plants that were all kind of destroyed when they removed the tree. Got a succulent display here, and then over here I've got a frangy penny tree that is hopefully coming back to life. Now, the reason why I'm thinking that this bird of paradise is going to have a good time here is because I already have one. This is the bird of paradise that was already here when I moved in, and it is thriving. Got new leaves, look at how big these new leaves are, and it has three of them coming through. So if this is happy and thriving, then I suppose so will be the other one. And down here, Brad has chosen another Maranta to look after. This Maranta, all of this new growth you can see over here has just grown over the last couple of months. I acknowledge it's the wrong time of the day to be filming. It's way too sunny, but as we approach the afternoon, too much sun hits the apartment, then it's hard to film inside the apartment. Ultimately, harsh sunlight is always terrible to film in, but some of my plants appreciate it. So these are my canna lilies. I got my canna Cleopatra, but it's not doing the red thing anymore. It's supposed to do, be green and red variegated, but it's just green. So it's a bit sad, but I suppose it's a nice filler. And then we've got the Stuttgart over here, which is also not really giving me the amazing variegation that I'm after. But it was the same last year. The first couple of shoots that came out were just green and then eventually the variegation came through. I got a barbecue, guys. So this year, first time I have a barbecue in my life. So I'm really excited. I'm actually gonna do my first barbecuing today. Now down here, I've got another Haliconia because I just can't stop myself from buying things. I don't even remember its full name, to be honest. It's Heliconia Kawauchi. Kawauchi, okay. But yeah, really excited. I just think Heliconias 
add such a nice tropical feel to everything and hide ugly things like the air conditioning unit. Over here I also have a nice new umbrella uh, and I think the umbrella really kind of makes this like a little room, makes it a bit cozier rather than being so open uh, before. Over here I've got my Bismarck palm, it hasn't really done all too much but it likes warm and a lot of sun so I suppose it's hopefully just waking up. And then over here I've got my elegance, uh, Likuala elegance. Um, I don't think it's gonna like a lot of light. It's probably gonna be a little bit too sunny for it over here. But the one thing that's the most detrimental to it at this stage in my courtyard is just the wind. It's too windy over here. It just keeps kind of getting bashed around. And as a result of this, the leaves kind of just rip. All right. Righty, this over here is kind of like my tropical section. So I've got a nice tomato film over here. Got a xanthosoma down there. Got some zizis there. And then in the back, I've got some more haliconias, some more canna lilies. Um, actually, I have more alocasias that I grew from seed as well. I had no idea they would gonna thrive from seed down here. A colocasia, a color lily over here. But I've done a full on garden video just recently. So I'm not gonna show you all of those. But the idea behind this is that this is more like the water loving plants. So I water this more frequently than the rest of the gardens. Alrighty, that's it. I think you've seen everything in and outside of my apartment. It took me eight months to get here and I'm finally really happy with the setup of my apartment. And I suppose spring making all of the plants thrive is definitely helping as well. Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe and leave a nice comment and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.